I can't catch a football. Like, the shape doesn't work for me. So I don't know how these players do this. Makes an unbelievable catch. How did he do that? The ball is so hard to go at that speed and for them to be able to catch it with one hand while they can barely not see the ball. I mean, I don't think people really give it enough credit. This is as good a list as you're going to get. Number nine. How is that possibly right? Eight in the box. That has to be better than seven. This is great. You're wrong. Five yards, we win the game. He's got the best number, four rings. Look at that, man. Is it number two? Has to be the number one. Laughable. There is no question. Number one. Best ever. Brought to you by Head and Shoulders. Shoulders were made for greatness, not dandruff. I have no idea what a catch is. And a miraculous catch. They say, wait a minute. Make sure it's a catch. I don't know what a catch is. You have to hold on to the ball after hitting the ground. Did you catch it? A catch is you bring it down. Catch. You hit the ground. Right. Left. You control it. Yes. If it pops out, it's not a catch. Are you serious? While the definition of a catch is a hot topic of debate, this show focuses on defining the greatest catch in NFL history. Greatest catch ever. That's a lot of catches. Are we talking catch in terms of the physical ability of it? Degree of difficulty will certainly be considered. I'm going to make a catch so nasty. Historical significance will be a determining factor as well. Jarvis Landry's catch it has to be like third, right? My goodness, with one hand Landry! Do you have a Ronda Gadsden on here? Oh, a one-handed catch! Like, do you know the one-handed catch in Oakland? Have you watched that one? John Jefferson, the one-handed catch just spearing it. Before one-handed catches were commonplace. Ooh, I just seen it! Yeah, Watch your feet! Like That's some good feet! It's not just being one-handed. There has to be a, an element of physical flair to it. He catches the ball. Goes all the way down the tunnel. The greatest catch I've ever seen! I've seen them all! That was a catch, right? He just signed a three-year deal with the Bears. I know, it's not a catch, so it's not on this list. It's the moment of when you make that catch that really defines that catch. The catch has to happen in a crucial game. Makes the catch at the five, touchdown! It has to have a good name. It has to have a play that you can immediately remember. He caught it! He caught it! He caught it! He caught it! When the game is on the line, when the season is on the line, when the championship is on the line. What a time to do it! Ricky Cole, no touchdown catches all year. I mean, those are the catches that I remember the most. The number 10 greatest catch of all time. The Immaculate Reception. Number 10? Number 10? That shocks me. Looking for somebody to throw to. Fires it downfield. And there's a collision. That's, that's cut out of the air. The ball is pulled in by Greg O'Hare. That is the defining play in NFL history. It's the immaculate reception. It's, it's divine. How does it not go higher just based on the name? That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. I, I just cannot believe that that is so far down. I would have put that number one. When you look at the whole thing, the way he rolled out. Back goes Bradshaw. He's looking. He's in trouble back there. He rolls out to the right. He's got the cannon for an arm. And they fire it in there, and the ball comes out, and you got Franco coming out of nowhere. I, I think that's the first great example. That's the legacy example of knowing there's a live football, and you can still make a play. The Raiders fans are go nuts because they'll tell you he never caught the ball. It hit the ground first. The immaculate reception lands at number 10 because to this day, it remains clouded in controversy. We never see the bottom tip of the ball. We never see the bottom half of the ball and whether or not it touches the turf. Franco doesn't give a straight answer. Did the ball hit the ground before you plucked it out of the air? I can't say. I saw it from an angle from across the field. The, the tip of the ball touched the ground. 
Did he catch it? Was it a catch? Did it hit anybody? Did it hit the defender? We don't know. Adding to the confusion was an obscure rule at the time involving Steelers running back Frenchy Fuqua. The rule stated that if a pass was deflected by an offensive player, only that player was eligible to catch the deflected ball, unless the ball is touched by a defensive player at any point, then any offensive player is eligible to make the reception. Did it touch him or didn't it touch him? And only he knows. Maybe, maybe not. That, I, I think, has been proven to be wrong. Films clearly show that the ball was off of Tatum's body, not off of Frenchie's. If you're still a fan, you believe in it. If you're a sinner like them damn Raiders, you'll never accept it. I thought we got taken. We should have had that football game, but we didn't get it. Fuqua knows he hit it, and it should have been our game. We don't call it the Immaculate Reception. The Immaculate Deception, as we call it here in Oakland. Sure, yeah. uh... What happened on that play it was truly immaculate. Who was that? Who was it, Malloy? Who was that, John Fox? Coming up, the player and catch <laughs> that no one remembers. Who is that guy? A guy you wouldn't expect to be on this list, but that catch was amazing. What's up, football world? 84 here. Randy Moss had a career filled with highlight reel plays. And Randy Moss just goes up and just makes it effortless. But our number nine greatest catch is his best. The number nine greatest catch of all time, the amazing Randy Moss. You look at the body of work that Randy Moss put together in New England, it's just like going through and picking, picking your favorite Beatles album. The one he had in 2007 going over the middle against the Colts where he reached back across his body and brought it in. That, for me, was probably the best catch of his career in New England. He had a catch against the Miami Dolphins in 2007, one-handed with three guys around him. You guys find that and pop that in there. If you had Randy Moss in 2007 on your fantasy team, you won before the first game was played. While Moss was on fire at 07, you have to fast forward three seasons for the catch that makes our list. They get to the line quickly, don't they? Brady he goes for the big ball to Moss. He reels it in with one hand right over Revis. Beat him this time. Anytime you have Randy Moss in a top 10, can you go wrong? I don't even have to say what a catch. Moss knew he had him too. He put that hand up from early, didn't he? Look at he that snack. Oh my God. His body is stretched out to the point where he covered eight feet. And it's on Revis. It's devastating to Rex Ryan. And it's just kind of that Patriots like, hey, buddy, you know, yeah. Now you remember, this was when everyone was talking about Revis like he was, you know, beyond Dion, the greatest player of all time. And then Moss makes that play. We don't hear so much about Revis for the rest of this season. It's more, wait a second, let's not disrespect Randy Moss. Lots of time, looks, shoots it toward the end zone. Insane. Caught, touchdown, Randy Moss. He doesn't even jump. He just extends his hand, like, I got this. And Revis is like falling at his feet, like, no, no, no. And he's like, I'm the man. There's a saying that some of these kids say, and it's, he got mossed. It means you're going up against a cornerback, you jump up, and you snatch it out of the air, and you make a poster out of the kid, like you're dunking a ball. You got mossed means he put on a show. He had a highlight play, or maybe had a highlight day. Sorry, Revis. You got mossed. The number eight greatest catch of all time, Marty Booker underhands it. Number eight. Who's Marty Booker? Marty Booker. Marty Booker for the Bears. Are we talking the 85 Bears? No, 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 no. Oh, Marty is so strange. You know, he was in 1985 hanging out with Doc. You know Marty. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, nothing rings a bell. They can't keep me down for long. Marty Booker was an all-pro receiver who played six seasons for the Bears. You know, Marty Booker was a 100-reception-plus yep. guy uh, back in 2000 season. But few remember him or the catch he made against the Lions in 2008. No. No. He didn't catch it. He did it. That's just we're all incomplete. Booker's catch was so amazing, even the officials had to take a second look. We have all stuck right there. You stop the presses. But what the Lester Hayes is going on with that stick of mobility? The one-handed palm of that ball. That is a catch. Fisher never sees the ball. Simon never sees the ball. The only person that sees the ball is Marty Booker. Oh, yeah. That's amazing, yeah. Marty Booker's catch definitely deserves a spot. Number five. That has to be number five. This man stretches his arm out behind the guy, behind him, and catches the ball literally an inch from the ground almost. The body control to do that on the sideline and the strength in his hand to make that catch, yeah, that was amazing. I'd forgotten about that. It's one hand, he's being interfered with, and he's able to control it through the act of the catch and that make that play. One thing to reach up with one hand. It's another thing to reach down with one hand while you're running full speed then having to stop and somebody interfering with you. The problem is that it didn't come in a big game with huge significance, so it gets kind of moved down or forgotten and lost a little bit in history. I'm glad this show is bringing that back because that catch deserves to be in there. And to say, you know what, this effort needs to be rewarded. Marty Booker should stop acting in films and, and do more of these things. Nice work, Marty Booker. That was sassy one hand. Up next, a divine reception. If you're ever gonna give credit to the Lord above, this is the play. The catch is what you believe a catch to be. It's very zen-like in that way. Just because it looks like a catch doesn't always mean it is. In the 1999 NFC Championship, a replay review took away what appeared to be a catch. That throw is complete. Burn Emanuel. The worst play that the refs called incomplete that should have been a catch remains, in my book, Bird Emanuel. That is highway robbery in the state of Missouri where Jesse James would have been proud of that call. Though the league has since tried to amend and clarify the rule, no one could believe that instant replay ruled against Calvin Johnson and Des Bryant. After review, it has been determined that the receiver did not maintain. Des Bryant, that was me. That was people hating the Cowboys. Mike, that's not a catch. I'm trying to reach over the goal line. Well, it wasn't a catch because the receiver's going to the ground, and if you're falling to the ground to make the catch, you got to maintain control until after you hit the ground, which he didn't. And I think that changed the whole landscape of people's belief on what's a catch and what's not. Our number seven play shows that sometimes when it doesn't look like a catch, it really is. The number seven greatest catch of all time, Antonio Freeman's Monday Night Miracle. Antonio Freeman makes the catch of his life. I mean, just a surreal catch. Under a blitz bar, pop flies the right side. Freeman trying to adjust to it, and it's incomplete. Wait a well, second. Wait a minute. It's Freeman takes it, it out of his hands. It's bounced into his hands. He takes Touchdown. it in the air. Touchdown. We win. Touchdown. Packers win. I have to see that again. Nobody knew what happened. Everybody in the stadium was just baffled. What are you talking about? What are you going to see now? No, you can't right now. What are you going to see now? Is it a catch or is it not a catch? I still can't believe he actually caught that ball. It was certainly weird the way that that catch ball just kind of popped up and was like, oh, here it is. This ball goes through Dishman's hands and it hits Antonio Freeman on the back. Antonio has the presence of mind to stay with the football as he's laying on the ground. It never hits the ground. That's a moment of pure focus and following through. In overtime, Monday Night Football, this is what it's all about. And it just kind of goes into the lore of the greatest plays in Packers history. Al Michaels was, at first, baffled by the play. He 
did what? He did what? <laughs> you can hear the emotional exclamation. You couldn't film that scene in a movie and make it look that good. And it is a another manic Monday. He didn't think it was a catch at first. I don't think most of us thought it was a catch at first. I mean, that was impossible. And I, even looking on the replay, I'm still not sure how he did it. He's on his stomach, the play's over, it's bouncing around on his back, and he gets it. Oh, right on the oh, oh, our left arm, bring the ball up in the air, and oh, he oh, 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 off the grass. What a unbelievable word. Like, how, how do you practice that? Who goes out of the field and says, I'm going to tumble down, have a ball plop off my shoulder, and spin around and make sure that I maintain enough focus to complete the catch on that play? The defender thinks it's over. And Antonio Freeman is all his way to the end zone. It happened on Monday Night Football. It happened with Brett Favre. So when you take all that into it, that's a top 10 catch. I don't know how this isn't number one. This is amazing. I don't know that that was really that impressive from Antonio Freeman's perspective. It was just such a weird play. Antonio Freeman, I think you should come up here and protest. I don't think it's number one, but it definitely deserves to be higher. I think you should be at least top three, baby. When players talk about they thank God or Jesus at the end, you know, I usually roll my eyes. But if you're ever going to give credit to the Lord above, this is the play. The number six greatest catch of all time. Jermaine Curse catches magic. Good, 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 good. The hustle up to the line of scrimmage. Under a minute and a half. Dancing, dancing. Russell in the pocket. Russell for Curse, and it's broken up again. Oh, and he winds up with a football. That would be one of the greatest catches in NFL history. I don't think anyone could even believe that he caught it. It was a miracle. Well, Curse goes for it. Uh, it's still not on the ground. It's still uh, not on the ground. It's still, well, look at that. Unbelievable. Yeah. It touched his body five times. Five. Head, and then knee, and then ankle. I think it hit his clavicle. I think it bounced off of his, his liver, maybe. Once you catch a pass that bounces off internal organs, it is one of the great catches ever. Crazy. It caught it! It fell into his arms! Holy catfish! No, Jermaine Curse made that great catch. I know what I thought, and I know what a lot of other people thought. How many different plays are the Patriots going to have like this? Mario Manningham, David Tyree. Now, a curse! This was where Tyree had the helmet catch. This was the scene of the crime for New England. What have we done to be going towards the same end zone in the same stadium? You instantly think to yourself, okay, there really was a deal with the devil that Bill Belichick and Tom Brady signed, and it's come up. One of those horrible horror movies that we've seen a million times before. It's happening again and again and again. It felt destined. It felt scripted. I was like, oh my gosh, the Seahawks are going to win this game, and that is going to be remembered as the best Super Bowl catch in the history of Super Bowls. Hands down. Holy moly. Curse's catch would have been higher on our list, except for one thing. Maybe the football gods were going to even things out. I think Jermaine Curse is number one on that list if Seattle gets one more yard. I think that Jermaine Curse would have been the greatest catch of all time, except Malcolm Butler happened a couple plays later. Play clock to five. Mash is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. Unreal. That beautiful catch, that spectacular catch, nobody remembers it because of what happened after, and it's so so sad. Harrell owes him an apology. Every year should send him like an I'm sorry fruit basket, you know, like some chocolate covered strawberries, something because nobody remembers it now. Oh no! Maybe the greatest catch ever was the casualty of that play call because if the Seahawks win that Super Bowl, that's all we're talking about. Jermaine Curse probably gets $5 million in endorsements. He becomes the Lynn Swan, the David Tyree, and this isn't number six on your list, it's number one. That's it. Still to come, a catch in rare air. And maybe the most famous single reception in NFL history. Should I throw it? 
I'm going to challenge it. Before we continue, there has been a challenge on the catches of our show. Thunder review. Let's make sure numbers 10 to 6 completed the process. Teddy Bobble. Perfect. Divine intervention in Pittsburgh. How does it not go higher just based on the name? Number 9. Ready Moss coins a new phrase. You got Moss. Number 8. It was Marty Booker. No one remembers Marty or his catch. That's amazing, yeah. Number 7. I don't believe what I just saw. He did what? Nobody knew what happened. Number 6. I could have been a contender for number 1. Nobody remembers it because of what happened after. And now, the number 5 greatest catch of all time. Lynn Swan in Super Bowl 10. I modeled my football career after when I was playing had to be as Lynn Swan because he was just so graceful in the air. Your football career started when you were seven. It ended at eight. Football is poetry. It's graceful. And when I see that catch, I think of art. That's the iconic catch of Lynn Swan's career. And maybe the most famous single reception in NFL history. Actually, Super Bowl X MVP Len Swan had two memorable grabs in that game. The greater catch is in the first half up the right sideline. The direction of Len Swan caught by Swan. He's made two incredible catches without a halftime yet. Those are magnificent plays. Those catches stand the test of time. Both catches have nicknames. The Levitating Leap. Lynn Swan's Levitating Leap was one of the great catches in football history. And the Kangaroo Catch. Lynn Swan's Kangaroo Catch put Pittsburgh in close. If you have nicknames for two catches, both in the same game, and you're the Super Bowl MVP, yeah, you belong in the top five. They're both such different catches. One's concentration. Look at the tip now by Lynn Swan. The catch on the other side. And one's body control. There's the jump. Oh, he gets the both out. A beautiful reception. I think if you were to, you know, bronze what a catch would look like, that would be a Lynn Swan catch. Swan had a reputation for on field finesse with skills he learned in his youth. People know he took ballet when he was in high school. His mom made him do that. And it paid off for him. You slow it down and you look at the grace and the concentration. If you play some nice little music, it's like art. It doesn't feel as great as it does on the NFL films with the music playing. So you're saying this is an inside job because NFL Films has the footage, it gets a higher ranking. Now we've fallen prey to the pretty girl at the bar, Lynn Swan's catch. I get it, but can anybody tell me the score at the time? Did it lead directly to a Super Bowl championship? I think not. Swan's two legendary receptions only led to seven points. But his third best play of the day sealed the Steelers' second Super Bowl win. I caught three or four catches, and, uh, hey, you know, I just loved it. Had a great time. You know what's so funny? A lot of times these athletes that are so good, they're also, like, so dingy. You know, he's like, I don't know, it's the game ball. All right, what is that you're holding right there? Uh, this is the uh, game ball for, uh, the, um, for the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's all mine. I just caught three or four passes. It's like, dude, you just, like, dominated the Super Bowl. Number four greatest catch of all time, Odell Beckham Jr.'s one-hander. If this is not number one, I don't know what catch is better than this. You have to be kidding me. That is impossible. This should be the catch. That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. It's in the conversation. Way, way too high. If you look at the degree of difficulty and how impressive the catch was, it's number one. It's not even close. Well, there, there is your play of the year, maybe of the, I don't know, decade, whatever. I'm a significance guy. I like catches that matter. It wasn't uh, a crucial catch in a tough situation. It was just a wow factor. Look at that catch. 
insane. Insane. I'm still getting over that one. It should be up to three. I'd move it one more spot. You're pretty close. You almost got there. Odell Beckham Jr. turned an average Sunday night game between the Cowboys and Giants into the most talked about event of the 2014 season. It happened there where I was like, well, that's not going to be a catch. How do you make that catch? Oh, my goodness. That's impossible. I mean, what he did is impossible. Nobody should be able to do that. He does it basically with his thumb and his forefinger. It was a visual that we had never seen before. That is absolutely impossible, what he just did. I didn't believe it. I had to go back. Once more, at least. I had to rewind and rewind, and then I had to do like frame by frame and see exactly what happened. Foot clearly in bounds, goes up with his inside hand, never puts the other hand on the ball, stays in bounds. Ridiculous. No question it was a phenomenal catch, but there's no way he makes that catch with three fingers with no gloves. If I dipped my hand in super glue, I could catch anything you throw at me. That thing just stuck. It just stuck. It doesn't stick like that, believe me. I don't think that's the greatest catch. If he does that barehanded, now I'm blown away. After being fouled. I mean, he was clearly fouled on the play, and that's clean. You could have small hands, you could have the biggest hands in the world, you could put a glove on. If you can't catch, you can't catch. I guess I gotta thank my mom for the long fingers. His body is in a position that it, it, it's more than being a one-handed catch. He's stretched out from every limb of his, he can't get, get any longer. Look at his eyes even going back to that catch, not even to mention they got fouled on the play. He's purely using proprioception at this point. What? Proprioception is just know where your body is at all times. Behind your back to pull it in and catch it, and then when you hit the ground to not fumble it, unbelievable. <laughs> that is ridiculous. That one is right there with anything I've ever seen, so that was pretty impressive. I don't think you can put it in the same uh, arena as, like, as the legendary catches made on the biggest stages. That catch, I don't care what, it could have been in a preseason game, it could have been in his backyard. The way that he went out there with his mitt, it looked like he had a glue trap to his hand. There's no way physically that some human being should be able to do that. That's a video game catch. Coming up, the greatest toe tap in NFL history. For import, for difficulty, that was insane. It was like he was saving a baby. Makes the catch inbounds. Receivers have always found creative ways to get two feet down inbounds near the sideline, from the toe tap to the belly flop. I ain't never seen somebody keep their feet like that all the time, dog. Oh my gosh. Beautiful, beautiful play. For all of the hoofers who have ever tiptoed the sideline, none have been as dramatic as our catch at number three. Holmes, sweet Holmes. It's the greatest catch in NFL history. Goes to the back of the end zone, and it is Holmes. It's one of the great plays in sports history. Unbelievable! Incredible! I've got a problem with this. Come on, that play should be in the top two. San Antonio Holmes is absolutely positively the number one catch of all time. Could the Steelers do it? Could Ben Roethlisberger do it? And they did it. I, anything Steelers is better. Know that. It's a religion. Black and gold, son. I really don't understand what the debate even would be. There's one catch on the top of this list that won a Super Bowl. And the greatest catch in that most important game happen with 34 seconds to go. I think it should be number one. For import, for difficulty, that was insane. It was like he was saving a baby. The way that he reached out and pulled it in and actually caught the ball. And he's like levitating maybe a half an inch to an inch off of the ground as he makes the catch and just taps him in and falls out of bounds. They must have sensors in their feet to know. I mean, it's like a like an invisible fence for a dog. Like, how would you know 
that your toe is just inside. Whoever did your pedicure that day, kudos to her. <laughs> it seemed like there were 30 defenders around him. It, it, it seemed like he was surrounded by the entirety of the active roster. You watch it in slow motion, it looks difficult. Imagine doing that with all the speed, all the defense, all the elements, the noise, everything. He made it happen, and for that, I think it's the best play we've ever seen in a Super Bowl. When he rises back up, he's a legend for all of time. Let's go. We got plenty of time to work, boys. Time to be great. Holmes also time made it to number three because of the comeback drive he helped engineer. Who dare? I'm daring to be great right now. From that moment on, it was a San Antonio home show. San Antonio said, give me the ball. Throws it on the run, the pass is caught. Holmes gets to the 27. So that drive really spanned over 100 yards when you think of what they dealt with. His team trails by three. Is going to step up in the pocket and fire the pass complete to San Antonio home for the great catch in traffic. Pops fires a pass, it's caught. Running down the sideline, 30, 25, San Antonio to the 10, San Antonio tackle at the five-yard line with 51 seconds to go. I have to think there's a decent chance the guy's close to gas. He basically brought the ball down the field by himself. We need this play, man. Just win the championship for us right here, man. I remember a calm came over me, and I knew what was about to happen. Throws it back corner of the end zone. San Antonio with a touchdown! San Antonio home! I don't know how he did it! This play should absolutely be higher because not only did it win the Super Bowl, but it has greatness on both ends of it. The snap. He's back. He pumps. He scrambles around. You talk about everything that had to happen on that play. The catch was phenomenal, but guess what? The throw was phenomenal, too. Just a brilliant football play encapsulated where you got this one great quarterback making this incredible throw and putting a teardrop over the top of the defense. Roethlisberger put it into place where his wideout could get it, but nobody else could. It's a brilliant throw. It's an even more brilliant catch. But I'd say at least number two. That's when I know whoever's picking is or not is not a Steeler fan. What's in front of it? <laughs> Seriously? Like, for real? There's absolutely no way. Still to come, what is the greatest catch in 49ers history? He caught it! He caught it! He caught it! That might have been the greatest catch I've ever made. Few teams have been a part of more amazing catches than the 49ers. In 1957, R.C. Owens introduced us to the alley-oop. This has got to be the alley-oop. There is no time for anything. For most of the 1998 NFC wildcard, Terrell Owens appeared destined to be remembered for what he didn't catch. I don't know that I've ever seen Terrell Owens play as poorly as he is today. However, on the final play of the game, he proved he could come through in the clutch. Owens! 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 He caught it! He caught it! He caught it! I dropped so many passes, but I caught the one that counted. In Super Bowl 23, Joe Montana and John Taylor connected on the winning score. Steps up, throws. But even that play can't compete with the catch at number two. Number two greatest catch of all time. The catch. The catch. Number two, listen, you're talking to a biased observer here. Of course I'd put it number one. As a 49er fan, we're good. I'll take that at number two. I will absolutely take that at number two. Hell no. It's got to be number one. It's got to be number one. Like, just to be called the catch, like that right there says it all. It's the catch. So if it's the catch, doesn't it have to be the catch then? Look on this list, has to, it's the catch. Don Landry is six yards away from his sixth Super Bowl. And of course, for the upstart 49ers, they're six yards away from Pontiac. The catch lands at number two because it remains one of the most iconic plays in NFL history.
wasn't that hard a catch. I mean, we see that catch all the time. To see the catch from the back of the end zone, to see just how high Dwight Clark actually did jump. He jumped up pretty darn high. Dwight Clark is 6'4". He stands about 10 feet tall in this crowd's estimation. I remember seeing the ball coming and thinking, wow, that's pretty high. He reached up and he caught it. I mean, was it that impressive? It really, truly was a fingertip catch. It wasn't like, obviously, it didn't hit him in the numbers. He went up there and, and pulled it in. It's not a, like, one-handed falling out of bounds. Full body, fully extended, grabs the ball, back of the end zone, time running out, so much pressure. Yeah, of course. It's an amazing catch. Would that even be a catch today? Because he caught it and spiked it. In the end zone, it's not dead as soon as he gets possession. Did he possess it long enough? Like, would they have reviewed that today and said, no, that's not a catch? Some people say he was trying to throw the ball away. You don't get what you want. You just throw it, simply throw the ball away. No, not there, away you go. I was actually on the 10-yard line at the other end of the field. I mean, I still think old Joe was throwing the ball out of bounds, but uh, <laughs> throwing it away anyway. I would have thrown it away a lot earlier than that. <laughs> if I was throwing it away, I certainly didn't want to get knocked down if I'm going to throw the ball away. Was Joe throwing it away? I think Joe was putting it in the one spot he knew could either result in something good or would extend the season one more play. <laughs> It's an iconic image. When you think about it, you can picture it in your mind, right? You can see him going up and how high he jumped and the ball coming in and it's almost in his hands and you know what the play is. I mean, that it was labeled the catch afterwards tells you everything you need to know. It was that good. It was just kind of an introduction to the country. This is Joe Montana. This guy's gonna be around for a while. This is Dwight Clark. This is the hookup. What a play by Dwight Clark. Without that catch, I don't believe that it would have been a dynasty for the Niners. So that's why when I think of one of the best, I think Dwight Clark in the catch. Up next, number one catch of all time. We reveal the number one catch of all time. The most amazing, incredible, improbable catch in any football game ever. That's the greatest catch in the history of football. We are so close to revealing the greatest catch in NFL history. Good catch. But before we do, let's admire the other great catches one more time. Watch this catch. Immaculate reception or deception. He never caught the ball and hit the ground first. Number nine. Randy Moss makes it look ever. He just extends his hand, like, I got this. Number eight. If you blink, you miss it. You stop the presses. Number seven. Hollywood has nothing on Antonio Freeman. You couldn't film that scene in a movie and make it look that good. Number six. Most body parts used to make a catch. He touched his body five times. Number five. Lynn Swan gives us two for the price of one. Number four, Odell Beckham Jr. destroys DVRs everywhere. I had to rewind and rewind. Number three, the greatest toe tap in NFL history. Full feet down, an amazing play. I think it should be number one. Number two, a catch by any other name just wouldn't be the same. That it was labeled the catch afterwards tells you everything you need to know. And now, the number one greatest catch of all time, David Tyree's helmet catch. The number one catch of all time has to be David Tyree. And it is caught, caught. Oh my God, are you gonna, is this gonna be a Tyree thing? Cause I'm gonna leave. Tyree's number one, that was more <laughs> luck than skill. How in the world did he do that? The ball stuck to his helmet and he caught it with two guys around him. Tyree had Harrison all over him. The ball was on his helmet. Greatest happenstance of all time. Like, greatest happy accident of all time. All it did was extend the drive. Inside the 25 and a timeout taken. There's a lot of crap that had to happen after that. Plaxico caught the winning touchdown. The Tyree catch has got to be number one because we've now been through a hundred years of the NFL and there's never, ever, 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 ever been a catch where a guy sandwiched it to his helmet. 
never happened, probably will never happen again. I remember watching that play unfold on the field and you thought a million times this, the play was over. You, you know, there were four or five points in time you're like, okay, it's over here, it's over here. And then it just, it was the longest play ever. That's a great catch by David Tyree. There's the snap, there's the in the grasp, there's the great escape. Eli Manning stays on his feet. There's the balloon throw. Airs it out down the field. There's the catch. It is caught by Tyree. Look, the most remarkable thing about the Tyree catch wasn't pinning it to his helmet. It was keeping it pinned when he hit the ground. Pressing it against his helmet as he goes to the ground and not dropping it. He hits the ground. And that ball has, by every right, should have gone squirting out. David Tyree went up and so, somehow was able to make the catch. It's Shakespearean. Hey, this is fairy tale stuff. Only God kind of stuff. David Tyree got lucky. I am still flabbergasted. There's a little bit of luck to it. Look, he held the ball against his helmet, okay? He made that work. I think just as far as a catch goes, I think Jermaine Curse's catch is better than David Tyree. It was tougher. It happened deeper on the field. One tip ball that falls on the ground to somebody who's lying on his back. It's just that they didn't win the Super Bowl after that. It's a fluky play, a great play, but it shouldn't be held up there with the skill that San Antonio Holmes displayed. It belongs in the top three. It's not as good as Dwight Clark. If you pin a ball to your helmet and it comes within three centimeters of hitting the ground, that's the greatest catch of all time. Oh, and it decides the Super Bowl? Yeah, it's the greatest catch. David Tyree is one of those guys who you're like, who? David Tyree just made the biggest catch of his life. That's the only thing that we could ever possibly remember him for. He doesn't have a lifetime of stats, very much a no-name receiver. Who else would expect David Tyree to come out here having a game like that? When David Tyree makes that catch, I turn to my brother and I say, I guarantee you, David Tyree will never play in another football game again. David Tyree did play in another game, but he would never make another catch in his NFL career. I think it endears people uh, to call him that number one because it wasn't Randy Moss, it wasn't Jerry Rice, it was a guy who was nervous to make the team every year. David Tyree can walk to the rest of his life knowing that on that one day, at that one moment in time, he did something that is immortal. That right there is the ultimate mic drop.